The fact is, we have to be honest, the border is wide open and that is by design. Joe Biden came in on the very first day of his presidency, unwound all those Trump era protections. And then since then, he started this fight. They're killing our sons, they're killing our daughters We cry, we march, but it's like fine water We gotta swim harder, we gotta swim harder I be watching you on YouTube. When you gonna do the old man? Oh, this one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. That's the dude I wanna get. Yeah, I wanna get it. Yeah, I mean, it's a good idea, man. It's crazy, man. Hey, so give me a second. Uh, synopsis of what's going on out here, man. What are you doing? Yo, man, you're a fuck, man. It's real work, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing but racist. Really? Racism? How long have been out here? Like me, for myself, I've been out here for like, I'm going to do this now. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Are they more? Is it more than back? Or what have they been doing? No, the thing is, the people that are here, they're running away from over there. All of us are over there. But this one, the point is, that's why we come over here. So, over there, we're going to be over there. That's why we come over there. But the thing is now, now the Mexican side, they try to be part of the two. The best thing is that we don't even know what to do. We're like, right in the middle of America and Mexico. We can't even go outside. We can't even go outside. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said they can't be You buy pass it. Men they go pack up the soil. You like they know been come see been salt. First salt they like they salt they know been fair. No been first salt they la. If you deport they know. C'est Mexique qui cause. Mais qui ne va pas comme si vous avez des gens Comme on a payé, on a tout. On va vous sortir de tout. Imaginez. Tout le monde a la guerre en bas là. Imaginez, nous avons une belle chaîne à Sanissa. Dans quelle zone vous êtes sorti en vous venez là Moi, je suis sorti au Brésil. Vous êtes sorti juste au Brésil ou marché 20 ans Combien de temps vous avez fait Je suis sorti au mois 22 juin. Au mois 22 juin. Il a dit qu'il est venu du Brésil. Il a pris un mois. In 22 days to get here from Brazil. He's originally from Brazil. Black will always be black. Exhibit Daniel, yeah, he a prophet sent back to the earth. Back to the earth. He sent you to wake up the people and tell them, come out of the church. Come out of the church. Be ready for war. Soon as they run, get out of the dirt. Out of the dirt. Hey. Shout out, why? Shout out, why? Shout out, why? Toes down. Shout out, why? Shout out, why? Shout out, why? Toes down. Got the juice, I ain't talking no big late juice. Cause you walk in the light of a new day. I can't listen to nothing a few say. Thank the Lord that you showed us a new way. Shout out, why? Shout out, why? Shout out, why? Hey, Shalom brothers, Shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. That's right. You know what day it is. That's right. It is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I love to read your letters of exhortation and your checks and money orders of constant support. And I pray that you continue daily more and more. Well, today we're going to have a very interesting topic. I need you all to sit back, get your Bibles, your pens, and your notebooks, okay? I'm going to use... Pastor G.E. Patterson of the Kojic Church of God in Christ uh, Church because he's one of the more famous ones. Some of you may or may have not have heard of him. I believe he passed away. I believe, yes, he did pass away. But he gave a sermon wherein he was stating that we are no longer under God's laws. And you got to examine the black community. The black, and I'm not saying other communities don't break God's commandments. That's not what I'm saying. But the black community, Black and brown, we are, are some of the most immoral people. The, ch the churches are filled with adultery, homosexuality. You see, you see it in your church choirs. Your prisons are filled with what? Religious Christians, cr Christian kids, Christian sons. You see it. Why? Because of the doctrine of we don't have to keep God's laws. 
You got you to realize the, the detriment that that doctrine have, has done to our people. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you on a little history first, and it's all going to tie in. I'm going to show you a little history. Pay close attention because it's going to tie into what G.E. Patterson says in his sermon. Take a look. All right. We have the history of the Jews from the destruction of Jerusalem to the present time. This book was published in 1818. What I'm going to show you, because I know a lot of you got questions about the so-called white man that calls himself Jewish. Does this book published in 1818 discuss them? Let's see, I'm going over. to page 167, chapter 11. Let's go down to the highlighted area. The eighth century is, I'm, I'm here. The eighth century is celebrated by Jewish writers for the conversion of Khazar. Some books call these people Khazars, okay? But pay, it's talking about the conversion of the white man to being Jewish. The, con, the conversion of Khazar a pagan prince to their belief. According to their accounts, he became dissatisfied with the religion of his people and progenitors, meaning forefathers, and conversed on this subject with philosophers, Christians, Mohammedans, meaning Muslims, and Jews. These Jews are black Jews. At length, a learned rabbi convinced him that Judaism was the only true religion to which all others were but as the shadow to the substance or the picture to the living original. Kozar, therefore, abjured his former tenets and after he was initiated in the belief and ceremonies of the Jews, employed himself in converting his subjects. <laughs> Look at this. He sent for the most learned men of this nation from all countries to instruct his people. And from that time, the original Jews were held in high estimation. So this, is, this book has given you the history of the white man converting to becoming a Jew. Now watch, continue watching, pay close attention. All right, this is the Jews, a study of race and environment by Maurice Fishberg. This was published in 1911. Notice page 64. All right. It says, these fair-haired Jews create a pro created a problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these Indo-Germanic Jews, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark-complexioned race like the Jews. Wow. So the scholars know the original Jews were dark complexion, meaning black. All right. Light and truth collected from the Bible in ancient and modern history, containing the universal history of the colored and the Indian race from the creation of the world to the present time by R.B. Robert Benjamin Lewis. I'm going to page 354 in this book. Y'all know I really like this, this book here. And we're going to read about uh, Jeremiah, starting right here. Jeremiah the prophet was the son of Hilkiah. The words of Jeremiah to his friends, thus saith the prophet, chapter 8, verse 21, I am black. Here he describes himself to be black. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 10. Our skin was black like an oven, meaning burned in a furnace. Here he describes his people. They are black unto or on the ground, mourning because of the terrible famine. Jeremiah 14, that's verse 2. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. We have given the hand to the Egyptians, meaning our slave masters, and to the Assyrians, another slave master, to be satisfied with bread. So this book shows you that they knew, according to the scriptures, the Israelites 
were, are, and will always be a black people. Fact. Commentaries on Hebrew and Christian mythology by Judge Parrish B. Ladd of the San Francisco Bar. I believe that this guy is an atheist and doesn't believe in the scriptures at all, but that's all right. Uh, copyrighted 1896. So let's go. I'm going over to page 198. All right. There's going to be a little bit of reading here. All right. I'm going to start here. In the mean, excuse me. In the time of the first crusading spirit, this is referring to the crusades. In the cities of Treves, Metz, Mainz, Worms, Spires, Strasbourg, and other smaller places, the streets were deluged with the blood of the Jews and other unbelievers at the hands of these pious warriors. So the crusaders was against the Jews and anybody else that did not believe in the Catholic Church. The Jews were expelled from Vienna in 1196. These are meaning the, the practicing Jews, those Jews, those black Jews that kept the commandments, were expelled from Vienna in 1196, from Mecklenburg in 1225, from Breslau in 1226, from Brandenburg in 1243, from Frankfurt in 1241, from Munich in 1285, from Nuremberg in 1380, from Prague in 1391, and from Radisbon in 1476. From 1346 to 1350, the Jews were murdered by thousands until the race in Germany became nearly extinct. In Switzerland, the Christians commenced to persecute the Jews about the middle of the 14th century. And in the 15th, they were expelled from the principal cities in that country. I'm jumping now to the highlight. When the Moors invaded Spain, the Jews lent a helping hand. They looked because the Jews, the Jews and the Moors looked the same. Now, uh, you had Jews that were Moors, um, and you, which were Muslims, and you had Moors that were Jews. <laughs> I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. And I've showed you the other classes where they looked and dressed very similar. You could, could not tell them apart. When the Moors invaded Spain, this is around 711 um, AD, the Jews lent a helping hand. So glad were they to escape Christian tortures. They were made equals wherever the Moors held sway. Okay, let's jump down. Watch this. Uh, I'll start here. In 1391 and 92, when five provinces held by the followers of Christ, untold numbers of Jews were murdered and their property was confiscated to the church. Escape, says one historian, was possible only through flight to Africa. So what do y'all think these Jews were? You think that these Jews being murdered, that had to escape to Africa. You think these were Caucasians? No, they were not. These were black men, black women. It said, or by accepting baptism at the point of the sword. Let's go to page 199. All right, I'm here. In speaking of this affair, one writer says the fate of the Jews in Spain during the 15th century, that's the 1400s, the 15th century refers to the 1400s. Beggar's description. He further says persecutions, violent conversions, massacre, the torture of the Inquisition. We read of nothing else. At length, the hour of final horror came when in 1492, this is the same year Columbus discovered America, allegedly, or the Caribbean, <laughs> when in 1492, an edict was issued from those pious rulers, Ferdinand and Isabella, that's King, that's King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain, by which the Jews were given four months within which to leave the country empty-handed to accept baptism or to suffer death. Let's jump down. These pious men ordered their victims to be burned to death. This the Jews well knew to be the fate of those who failed to leave their homes and country or become Christians. All right, page 200. 
I'm just jumping down, just jumping down. Some 80,000 bought of the Christian sovereign of Portugal a stopover privilege until they could earn money enough to go on. So they went from Spain to Portugal. Okay, 80,000 of them. Watch this. After the lapse of the time for their exit, many lingered being unable to get away. King Emmanuel, in the tenderness of his Christian heart, sold into slavery many of the more common Jews. So who do you think these Jews were that were sold into slavery? These were black men, black women, sold into slavery, many of the more common Jews. And by an edict, he ordered all the children under 14 years of age of the better class to be taken from their parents and turned over to the Christian brothers to be brought up in the true faith. So they took the black children of the Jews and made them slaves to their Christian brothers. Wow, I'm gonna show you that in a minute. This piece of refined cruelty drove many of the mothers to destroy their offspring rather than let them fall into the hands of their persecutors. Their persecutors were Christian brothers. Hmm. This piece of refined cruelty drove many of the mothers to destroy their offspring rather than let them fall into the hands of their persecutors. Those who accepted forced baptism, but who for the most part secretly adhered to their old faith or of keeping the commandments were constantly on the rack of torture. And then they get into the filth of uh, Luther and Calvin. That's for another lesson. But I want to show you on this lesson also how these Christian brothers they uh, sold into slavery many of the more common Jews and by an edict he ordered all the children under 14 years of age of the better class to be taken from their parents and turned over to the Christian brothers. They did this not only in Portugal and Spain, they did it in Denmark, Italy. I'm going to show you the picture. I've showed y'all before, but it's such a good thing. I, I'm going to show you this history needs to come out. All right, y'all remember this book, Image of the Black and Western Art, edited by David Byman. This guy, he ain't right in the head. And Henry Louis Gage Jr., I think this brother's sleep when this demon David Byman was orchestrating and writing this book. Let's go on inside here. All right, here's one of the young men, Christian slave. They made our sons and daughters Christian slaves. Look, there's a young man right there, Christian slave. Look, they made our sons Christian slaves. I don't want y'all to think I'm making anything up. I'm not making nothing up. We read the history just now. Christian slave. Christian slave. Look, Christian slave. Christian slave. Christian slave. Gotta put her damn jewelry on. The hell is this? Christian slave. Here we gotta put that damn jewelry on again. The hell is this? Christian slave. Oh. Well, you need to bust upside the head with the mirror. Christian slave. And here's a picture in uh, Portugal 
I want you to notice all the blacks here. You got these two blacks cooning for the Portuguese man and woman. Cooning, singing to them like they do in church. Okay, you got a Christian black here with the sign of the, uh, I always forget the name of this order. Order of San Diego, Santiago. That's this guy. Got two blacks here walking around. Their black clothes on. You got Amalek over there. You got a black man being tortured during the Inquisition right here. You got black women all over the place. Just look at all the black faces. They bust this young man upside the head. Let me see if I can focus that with a stick and carrying them away. Look at all the black people here. With a t in, Port in Lisbon, that's Portugal. Slaves outnumber free Portuguese and anonymous entirely declared that the cities resemble games of chess with equal numbers of white and black people. Here's another one, Christian slave, when they took our children. Christian slave, you, and you talking about racial reconciliation, what the hell is wrong with you? Christian slave. Christian slave. Christian slave. Christian slave. And they gave us forced baptism. They forced our children to be uh, Christians. Following the white Christ. White supremacy. You don't need to be ashamed of yourselves. Mm. Christian slave. Christian slave. Christian slave. Christian slave. All right. Back to commentaries on the Hebrew. On Hebrew, page 202. The Jews were driven out of Protestant Bavaria in 1553. Now, these are the practicing Jews that kept the commandments. They were driven out by Protestant Bavaria in 1553, out of Brandenburg in 1573, and the Protestant city of Hamburg in 1730. They were persecuted in the most inhuman manner. So you Protestants are a bunch of bastards yourselves. You love to try to disassociate yourselves with the Catholics and say it was the Catholics doing all the persecuting. Nah, you bunch of liars, you bunch of demons. You Protestant whites was persecuting us as well. It says, they, regarding our people, they were persecuted in the most inhuman manner. And during the whole of the 17th and a part of the 18th centuries, Protestant Germany increased its persecutions. Let's jump down. This part goes on that demon Luther, Martin Luther, but I wanted this part here. At the present time, the Jews have had their property confiscated and are being driven out of Russia by the Christian emperor of that country on the ground that they cannot and do not believe in the dogmas of Christianity. Talking about white Jesus. We didn't believe in that crap. Let me show you something. I know some of y'all get confused about Russia. The horizon history of Russia. The horizon history of Russia. Let's go. I'm going to page 20. I want you to look at, who is this? In an 11th century Byzantine manuscript, Princess Olga of Kiev, widow of Igor, is pictured at the emperor's court in Constantinople, where she was royally crowned, royally welcomed about 957 at Russia's first Christian, as Russia's first Christian ruler. 
What do y'all see? Hmm? What is the complexion of these people? You mean it was a fire that burned up the back too? Hmm? Cause they'll say, oh, it was fire dark in their skin. So what about the turbans they got on? Hmm? What about these head coverings? Hmm? How come the fire didn't jump there or in the background? Dummies. First Christian emperor here. The Jews and Moors in Spain by Joseph Kraskov. I'm going to start right here on the second day. If I can just focus this. On the second day of January, 1481, the Inquisition commenced operation in the city of Seville, that's Spain, with Thomas de Torquemada as Inquisitor General of Castile and Aragon. A few years later, it found its way into every prominent town of Spain and confined itself everywhere almost wholly to the Jews. The severity and savage alacrity of it may best be learned from the appalling fact that during the 18 years of Torquemada's ministry, an average of more than 6,000 convicted persons suffered annually from the cruel tribunal by burning or by condemnation to lifelong slavery or by endless torture, making an average of nearly 17 a day and the entire number punished during an existence in Spain from 1481 to 1808, amounted to 340,000 persons. All this to protect the interest of religion. All this for offenses so trivial that one, all this for, All this to protect the interests of religion. All this for offenses so trivial that our blood boils with indignation at the very thought of the highness cruelty. It was sufficient to burn a convert as a relapsed heretic upon the mere accusations of crimes such as these. That he wore better clothes or cleaner linen on the Jewish Sabbath than any other days of the week. That he had no fire in his house on the Jewish Sabbath. That he ate that he ate the meat of animals slaughtered by Jews, that he abstained from eating pork, that he gave his child a Hebrew name, and yet he was prohibited by law under severe penalties from giving a Christian name. So our people were tormented and tortured for keeping God's commandments. All right, so you saw the history. I pray you gleaned something from it. Now I said the modern day church is of the Antichrist. Some of you are confused as to why I said that, and I'm not pinpointing just G.E. Patterson. I'm talking about the entire Christian religion called Christianity. It's of the Antichrist. You've been waiting, wondering when are we, when are we uh, uh, going to look or find, and you're already under anti. Let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. Now this ain't in my notes, it just popped to my head. All right, let's go to 1 John. But y'all bear with me. Uh, all right, watch this. 1 John chapter 4, I'm in verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Here it comes. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is of God. Now, you know there's different kinds of flesh on the earth. Come on now. Come on now. You have Caucasian flesh. You got Asian flesh. You got black flesh. You got brown flesh. There's different kind. You got animal flesh. There's different kinds of flesh on the earth. So now watch this. 
Verse 3, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. So you got to ask these pastors. You ask them, did Christ come in the flesh? He'll go, yeb, yeb. Then you ask him, what kind of flesh was it? Was it black flesh? Caucasian flesh? White flesh? Asian flesh? East Indian flesh? Huh? Animal flesh? What kind of flesh did Christ have? He go, it, it, it Caucasian flesh, white flesh. Really? Let's read on. I'm going to read verse 3 again. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Hmm. Where have you ever heard that it should come and even now already is in the world? So now what comes with Christ having the wrong kind of flesh? Hey, put up the image of white Jesus. Now, many of you know this is a false image. I'm going to prove it according to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15 gives you the description of the flesh of Christ. Revelation 1, 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, meaning Christ had afro hair. That's what wool means, afro. All right. Then it says in his eyes was a flame of fire. He drank wine in moderation. The whites of his eyes were white. Let's read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. Brass is brown. Here it comes. As if, as if they burned in a furnace. Now get a white boy out of that. So if you are teaching that Christ had the wrong kind of flesh, guess what comes with that? A wrong gospel. Wrong doctrine. You understand that? You can't teach Christ is black and then squeeze in. Get away from the laws of God because Christ was a commandment keeper. And I'm going to show you that today. I'm going to show you evil black Christians that today. And I don't get mad because I'm calling you evil black Christians. I myself was an evil black Christian. Sat in the Christian church at all manner of evil. I can't even, some of the stuff I can't even say on video. Okay. So now what I want to do, I am going to continue on regarding what I said. Now y'all saw the history. I said the modern day church is of antichrist. And yes, it's an extension of the Roman Catholic church. I'm going to say it again. One more again. The modern day church is an extension of the Roman Catholic church. Now I know what you Christian apologists are saying. You ain't in defense of nothing. No, no, no. We, we are Protestants. We are, we protested. We protested against the Roman Catholic church. Really? You protested against the Roman Catholic Church. Well, let's examine that theory. Now, it is true that you, you deny that the Pope is the substitute of Christ on earth. You do deny that. But do you deny Chris, uh, Christmas as the birth of Christ? No. Do you deny that New Year's is the beginning of the year? No. You accept that. Do you deny Mother's Day? Nope, you accept that. Do you deny white Jesus? No, 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 no. You accept that. Do you deny... Ah, uh, let me get some more now, what you guys teach. Do you deny... Hmm, I said Mother's Day, Father's Day, Dog Day, and Cat Day. Do you deny... I said Sunday. Did I say Sunday? Do you, deny, do you deny Sunday as the new Sabbath? No, because you all go to church on Sunday. Hmm. So here's another thing. During the, 16, during the 1400s, when the Pope instituted the slave trade, it began with Pope Nicholas, uh, Pope Nicholas the Fourth, followed by Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome. Did Protestant Christians who came to America, ask the pilgrims, did you protest against slavery? Oh, we had abolitionists. They came later. And it's not a lot of them either. I'm going to ask again, did the Christian church deny the Pope's decrees, his papal bulls of slavery from Pope Nicholas IV and Pope Alexander VI? No, you didn't. Ask the pilgrims, you, they slaughtered the American Indians, enslaved some, sent them to Spain. Okay? 
They enslaved the blacks that came over here. So you a bunch of gosh damn liars. And you black Christian, just shh, cause you don't know no history. You don't know a damn thing. Shut the hell up and just listen. Especially you black women. Oh God. Shut up. You don't know nothing. You Christian black women, just be quiet. Eat your pork and ribs. Be quiet and choke. Okay, I know I'm being mean spirited. Let me let me take it down. I'm gonna take it down. So, uh, oh oh, how can I forget this? When the when the Roman Catholic Church taught don't keep God's commandments, does modern day Christianity accept that doctrine or deny that doctrine? They accept that doctrine of don't keep God's. And I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna prove what I say. Okay. They said, don't keep God's laws, his commandments. It's demonic. That's what y'all teach. Okay. So now in today's modern day society, we're taught from when we are young in school that there's separation of church and state. Are y'all familiar with that separation of church and state? When as back during the Renaissance and Byzantine, it was one, one thing, but now they say separation of church and state. Well, here's my question. What is it called when a state uses church leadership to control or manipulate the people? I'm going to ask the question again, because I know some of you are slow. In today's modern day society, we are taught there is separation of church and state. But what is it called? When the state uses the Christian church to control and manipulate the people, it's called Antichrist. It's called Antichrist. And I'm going to prove everything I'm saying. It's called Antichrist. So the modern day church is of the Antichrist because it is molded and manipulated by the state. The federal government, the World Health Organization, Planned Parenthood, you name it. I'm going to prove what I say. So now, I'm going to show you a book I just got. Thank you, Captain Shemaya, for uh, putting me on this book. Called The Negro Project by... I forgot the dude's name, but I, I'm going to just show you. It's upstairs. It's upstairs. I ain't got it down here. The Negro Project. Watch the clip and do yourselves a favor. Pick up the book. Watch this. All right, here's a book entitled The Negro Project by Bruce Fleury. Look at the words in the back here. That's Margaret Sanger. Birth control must lead to ultimately to a cleaner race. Bruce Fleury's The Negro Project, Margaret Sanger's diabolical, duplicitous, dangerous, disastrous, and deadly plan for black America. Forward by Ron Edwards. Now I want all you evil black Christian women or Christians in general to pay close attention to your precious planned parent, parenthood and your churches. Pay very close attention. Introduction. I'm going to start here. In the following pages, we, we will examine the alliance between the founder of the organization we know today as Planned Parenthood and these individuals, an alliance that was called the Negro Project. So the original name was the Negro Project. It later became known as Planned Parenthood. See, you black women been fooled to hate your race and hate yourself and hate your people. I'm talking to you Christians, you lying evil black Christians, the purpose of which was nothing less than the self-imposed extermination. Look at that. Self-imposed extermination of an entire group of Americans based on one reason and one reason alone, the color of their skin. Can you jump down? This enterprise and its deliberate attempt to rid the world of blacks and other minorities Sanger herself referred to them as human weeds that were in need of eradication, lest their progeny continue to hold back what she would call human progress. 
meaning the white race. Let's flip that. All right, let's go to chapter one. Again, this is for you black evil Christians out there. Now, you know what you'll do? You'll read this or hear this information I'm showing you. You'll get the book later on. But rather than fall on your knees and pray to the Lord for mercy and forgiveness, you're mad right now at me because I'm calling you evil black Christians. When they, there's an old expression, don't hate the messenger. <laughs> don't stone the messenger. I'm just giving you the message. All right, chapter one. We should hire three or four colored ministers preferably with social service backgrounds and with engaging personalities. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through a religious appeal. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. That's a quote from Margaret Sanger to Clarence J. Gamble. December 10th, 1939. Check that. Get them damn black ministers. Them no good Christian ministers. They'll do it. Hey, let me ask a question. When they wanted to introduce the vaccine, who did they get to push it? Who was one of the first ones they got to push it? You always look for the black minister, black Christian minister. Here we're on page 109. Let's take a look. Let's read it together. We have also seen in these pages how these affiliates replace the words birth control with the more palatable euphemism Planned Parenthood to disguise the true nature of the eugenic movement, to wipe out those whom the eugenicists con consider to be unfit through various means... Now, what I want to say regarding this, regarding this, see how they changed the word birth control to Planned Parenthood? They also changed the word murder to abortion. Let me say it again. Just as they can, they changed the words birth control to Planned Parenthood, they changed the word murder to abortion. All right, page 111, page 111. All right. Watch this. In actuality, Planned Parenthood receives the bulk of its funding from the federal government. That's right. The same the federal plate, government that the gives the vaccines. I ask the question yes. again. Because I know some of you are. Which slow. means that the U.S. taxpayer is bankrolling its activities to a very large degree. In today's modern degree, day society. We often are with little to no sane amount. Separation of this. church Planned Parenthood received over $350 million of what tax is it money in 2006. When the over $360 million in 2009. Church over $500 million in 2012. And, manipulate and over $540 million in 2013. It's called anti From your federal government. It's called the same place that's I'm issuing out the I'm vaccine from the World Health Organization. So the modern day church the World is Health of the Organization. That's right. Because it is molded and manipulated by the All right, state. let's read a little bit from the Arizona Capital Times. Name I'm going to prove what I say. Abortion. So now. The overlooked tragedy. I'm going to show you a book I just America. got. I'm only going to read the highlighted parts. 36% of all abortions were obtained by black women. Wow. Forgot to do read that name, again. 36% of all abortions were obtained by black women. Project. These are the Christian Watch black the women who sit in the church on Sunday, but Friday was twerking and spreading their legs. Let's get some more. Let's read this part here about percentages. It indicates that the over 44 million abortions since the 1973 Roe v. Wade Supreme Court ruling, 19 million black babies were aborted. Oh my God. So from 1973 to now, 19 million black babies were aborted. All right. Now, so that y'all know I'm not bearing false witness. You saw in the book how Margaret Sanger, the original name of that eugenics project was called the Negro Project, a project to exterminate black people. They called us human weeds. 
okay? They wanted a, and this is all from Nazi Germany, but they brought it to America, okay? You black Christians, just please don't speak. Y'all just need to listen because you hate to research and do any reading on your own. So I don't need y'all to say a word. So the Negro Project became known as Planned Parenthood. Did you see how many black women killed black babies from 1970 to today? 19 million. Do you see that? You saw it. Did you see how the state used T.D. Jakes and his wife to push the World Health Organization of the vaccine? Did you? All I want to know is did you see it? See, it for seeing is believing sometimes. Because I'll tell you something, I'll say something, and no, you know, the bottom lip comes out. No, 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 you know, black people, put your lip in your mouth. Seeing is believing sometimes. So now what I want to do, I want to take a look at today's black church with Bishop G. E. Patterson and his breakdown on Romans chapter 10, verse one through four. Let's take a look at our beloved brother, Bishop G.E. Patterson. Take a look. Back to Romans 10, you got it? Come on, let's go back where we started. Verse one, read. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now comes the bombshell, read. For Christ is the end of the, wait a minute, Since I'm in Christ, why keep trying to put me under the law? Why keep trying to put me under Sabbath days and put me under meats that I can eat and can't eat? Put me under what I can wear and can't wear? Why keep trying to put me under the law when Christ is the end of the law for righteousness? Come on, read verse 4 and read it all the way through. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Praise God. This is what Paul was constantly battling with. Y'all got this a good show for us to come. All right, let me quote Bishop G.E. Patterson. He said, Why well, keep trying to put me under the law like Sabbath days and meats when I, or what I can wear or can't wear when Christ is the end of the law, of the law. Huh? That's what he said. He said, based on Romans 10, one through four, why keep trying to put his black ashy behind under God's laws of Sabbath days and meats and what he can wear and what he can't wear when Christ is the end of the law and all you black ashy devils was woo, woo, thank you white Jesus, thank you white Jesus. All this extends from the time of the Roman Catholic Church. I showed you the footage, I showed you the history when they forced us to get baptized by the Roman Catholic Church. Then those same children grew up and they sent them over here as slaves later on. And that doctrine of water baptize me, but don't keep no law was from the 1400s, 1500s, all the way up to today. All the way up till today. So, what is, let me read it. Let me read Romans 10. Well, I can't stand black ignorance. Brethren, My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Hmm. Now, why would Paul say that when he, why doesn't he say the Philistines might be saved or the Moabites? So you got to break it down like that. You know, that's for you teachers out there. 
when you because the word world is a broad word like I'm, I'm, I'm referencing John 3 16 for God so loved the world the word world is broad it has several meanings it could mean a world as in a planet earth it could mean a section of the planet it can mean a group of people having common interests I want you to understand. see black people you don't shh, shh, you don't look things up and I always say look for the older dictionaries the new ones it's not not too good okay and that's for all you Googleites out there get some of the old dictionaries do yourself a favor you had something called the animal world the fish world the world of Asia the world of Greece the Greek world hmm? the African world they're different worlds. So when you get to, uh, no, nah, not when you get to, but all through the Bible, and I'm including Romans 10, Paul says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Notice he did not say that the Edomites be saved, the Philistines, the Moabites, the Gergesites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Ishmaelites. He didn't say none of that. And there's no scripture that says that. You look for the word world and try to throw everybody in there like a smorgasbord or a Louisiana gumbo stew. Let's read on verse two. For I bear them record that they have a, a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. What is he referencing that, the, that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge? Romans 10 is referencing Acts 15. I'm going to just take you on a little tour to Acts 15. What happened in Acts 15? Acts 15, and what verse do I want? I want verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now, what was that talking about? Because that doctrine was something they imagined. They were denying Christ and said that you had to be circumcised first and foremost then you had to keep the laws of Moses. What laws of Moses? The entire thing. Let's pause there. The laws of Moses have been broken down into five categories. Listen good. I want you to write this down. Let's do it like this. Moral law. Civil law. Ceremonial law. Dietary law. And sacrifice of animals, that law, sacrificial law. Those are the five categories that the law of Moses is broken down to. Which one of those five is the Pharisees making reference to in Acts 15? They're saying you got to keep everything. But when you go to Romans 10, this is one thing about Paul you I don't understand. Because to keep, I want you to understand, to keep the sacrificial law means you're denying Christ. Because Christ was a sacrifice, was he not? But if I say no, sacrifice that lamb right there. Who am I denying? Christ. That's what Christians you need to understand. I'm going to show you that. Watch this. Romans 10 again. I don't want you to forget the thought. Romans 10 verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. What does verse 4 mean? Because that's what Bishop G.E. Patterson was referenced, talking about. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe. Everyone of who? Verse 1 says, my prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So it's referencing Israel. So what does it mean for Christ as the end of the law? What law? Did Christ do away with the moral law? For example, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not kill. Did he do away with that? I want you black Christians to speak. Now you can speak today. Are we allowed to murder? Are we allowed to commit adultery, worship idols? If you have any common sense, the answer is no. So the moral law is still in effect. What about the civil law? The civil law is how to deal sociably with your people. How to deal sociably with your people. Like, for example, under the civil law falls laws of marriage. Is it lawful? 
lawful for me to beat my wife and cuss her out and do whatever the hell I want, kick her out the house? All you women right now going, no! Okay, then. So we still under the, the civil law. What about uh, the dietary law? Are we still under that? Can we eat whatever we want? Right now, some of you going, yeah, but we can eat whatever we want. Okay. I'm going to put that on the table. What about the ceremonial law? Like God gave us a listing of holidays. He gave us the seventh day Sabbath. He gave us Passover, memorial blowing of trumpets, feast of tabernacles, uh, memorial, yes, the memorial blowing of trumpets, uh, tabernacle. I said that already. Uh, what else did he give? Oh, the new moons. Hmm? Do we got to keep that? Some of you right now are saying no. Not only can we eat what we want to eat, but we have replaced God's holidays. You didn't replace the Roman Catholic Church replaced God's holidays. They rep replaced Passover with Easter. They replaced um, Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication. Read it in John 10, 22 to 24, please. They replaced the Feast of Dedication with Christmas. Hmm? Roman Catholic Church did that. That's why at the beginning I was telling you, you don't reject the Roman Catholic Church. Christianity has adopted many of the principles of the Roman Catholic Church. You're Antichrist. Okay, so now the last one. No, I said that I did really say that. The last, the fifth one was the ceremony. Uh, excuse me. The last one was the sacrificial law. What does the Bible say about these five sets of laws? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. I need you to bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Hebrews chapter 10, you can read the whole chapter, but I want you to read along with me, and I'm going to read verse 8 through 10. Paul explains what part of the law was done away. Hebrews 10 verse 8. Above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin Thou wouldest not. What did those three words say? Thou wouldest not, meaning God didn't want that no more. Neither had his pleasure in therein, which are offered by the law. Because under the law of Moses, that was a part of it. That was one of the five categories. That's what it means, which are offered by the law. Verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, the first what? The first covenant of animal sacrifice that he may establish the second, the second covenant of the new covenant of Christ dying on the cross. Verse 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He was explaining this to the Hebrews. You understand that? So out of those five categories, what was done away with? The law of sacrifice, because Christ was the fulfillment of that. Now, some of you may or may not believe. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take you through several scriptures. I want you to write these scriptures down. I'm going to start with Christ. Because a lot of you like to ignore, ignore Christ. I want, hey, all you teachers, notice what Christians do. Anytime they want to say we are not under the law, do they go to the Lord and Savior whom the world calls Jesus Christ? Nope. Who do they go to? Paul. They were taught by the Roman Catholic Church. So now what I want to do is go to the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, I'm going to start with Christ. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. We're going to read verse 17 to 19. You black Christians, follow along. Hey, you white Christians, y'all can follow along too. I don't care. But I'm dealing with my people because they've been destroyed by your religion. Matthew 5, 17, this is Christ speaking. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Right now, there's an ashy black Christian jumping up saying, he fulfilled all the law, we ain't got to do it. Write this down. Acts 3, 18, what did Christ fulfill? Acts 3, 18, I'm going to read it. Acts 3, 18. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. So what did he fulfill? Him suffering. What did his suffering mean? He sacrificed himself. That's what he fulfilled. Do you understand that? 
Let's go back to Matthew 5, where Christ is speaking. Verse 18, Matthew 5, 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, hmm? heaven is still there and earth, I'm on earth right now. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So now he just explained he fulfilled the law of sacrifice. Everything else that's not pertaining to the law of sacrifice, which includes the Levitical priesthood that fell under the law of sacrifice, the temple laws fell under the law of sacrifice, everything else is in full effect. Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Has all been fulfilled yet? Have we been delivered from the land of captivity? Has Christ made his second coming? No, that hasn't been fulfilled yet. So shh. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Meaning you're going to be like a thought. You're not going to make it. Remember that dude that used to talk about that evil? That's what that's going into. But whosoever shall do and teach them, do and teach what? The commandments. The same shall be called great, great in the kingdom of heaven. That's what I'm talking about right there. So that's what Christ said. So you can either fight against the words of Christ, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and put Paul on the throne. Go ahead, put Paul on the throne. You evil Christians out there. Let's read some more. Matthew 19. I'm still going what Christ said. Because Christ is over Paul. Matthew 19, 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? What is eternal life? Salvation. Verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But, if thou will enter into life, if you want salvation, keep the commandments. You see those three words, what Christ said? Keep the commandments. So what in the hell are you Christians talking about? What in the hell is Bishop G.E. Patterson talking about? What in the hell is the Kojic Church talking about? Antichrist, every one of you. There's room to repent before you die. Let's go to the book of John. Book of John, chapter 14. Y'all bear with me. 14, verse 15. Christ speaking. If you love me, keep my commandments. You know what Christ said? If you love me, keep my commandments. All you Christians, especially you women, you all say you love Jesus. No, you don't. You twerk on Fridays and worship on Sundays. Y'all evil as hell. I'm here to, just to let you know. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments, okay? Now I'm going to jump on down to, to, to John chapter 15, verse 10. This is Christ speaking more, some more. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. What Bible are y'all reading? Y'all are lost in evil. The Antichrist has been here from day one. For Paul said it was that spirit was back then. And I'm telling you, the Roman Catholic Church has embodied it and Protestant Christians have accepted it. That's what's going on today. Let's get some more. I'm going to go to the book of Acts. You know, Luke wrote the first half. Paul wrote the second half. Acts. Book of Acts chapter 15. Watch this. Pay close attention. This is for all you know. Don't keep, keep the commandments. Acts 15 verse 20 and 21. Uh, remember, this is regarding the Gentile Israelites that were scattered abroad that came back into the truth. What about those Gentile Israelites? Watch Acts 15, verse 20. Mm, I'm going to start at 19. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among, which from among the Gentiles, that's the key, are turned to God but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. Where is that from, pollutions of idols? That's in the Ten Commandments. Remember the first three, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Uh, no idols and no images. Don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's pollutions of idols. Then it says, and from fornication. Fornication is sexual immorality. 
Like thou shalt not commit adultery. That's in Exodus 20. No homosexuality. That's Leviticus 20. That's not in the 10. Hmm? Leviticus 18. About you can't have sex with your stepmother. Or your son or your daughter or your mother or your father. Hmm? Or your sister's kids. That's part of moral law. That's not in the Ten Commandments, though. That's what it means from fornication. Then it says, and from things strangled and from blood. Where is that found, things strangled and from blood? Leviticus 17 and Leviticus 11, that's the dietary law. They were teaching God's commandments to those Gentiles, Israelites. Those Israelites that came from among the Gentiles, that thought they were Greeks, that thought they were Romans, that called themselves Corinthians, that called themselves Thessalonians, that called themselves Philippians. Now, if I'm going too fast, just rewind the tape. A lot of information here. Now watch verse 21. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogue every Sabbath. So now the apostles are saying, now if those Gentiles want to learn more than those instructions we gave, they can go into the synagogues and learn more about what Moses taught regarding God's commandments. That's what verse 21 is saying. Let me read that again. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. You see that? Now let's get to Paul. Importantly, proficiently. Acts 21 verse 24. Acts 21, verse 24. Paul had to meet with uh, James and the other apostles, the elders, and watch this. Hmm. Acts 21, where do I want to start? I think I'll start at verse 21. Acts 21, verse 21. And th this is what they said to Paul. And they are informed of thee that thou teaches all the Jews which are among which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. So there was a, there was getting on Paul about his letters because Paul's letters were hard to be understood, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it there for? The multitudes must needs come together. What does that mean? The multitude of the Gentile Israelites and the Jew Israelites have to come together for they will hear that thou art come verse 23 do therefore this that we say to thee we have four men which have a vow on them now here's the point verse 24 them take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them and they that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. See that? The apostles told Paul to take that vow of the Nazarene so that all Israel could see that he walked orderly and kept the law. Romans 2.13 For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Wow, you never read that in church. Who wrote that? Paul, the one that Christ chose. Okay, let me read it again. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Let's go to Romans 3 and verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Forbid. That means hell no. Yea, we establish the law. What does it mean we establish the law? It means we do the law. Who wrote that? The Apostle Paul. For you lying, evil Christians out there like Bishop G.E. Patterson and the rest of the Kojic Church and all the rest of you. Let's get some more about Paul. What's after Romans? Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 19. This is what he says. Circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. Now, why did he say that? Because when it says circumcision is nothing, you had Israelites, the Pharisees, for example, and scribes who were circumcised. They were not keeping God's law. They were evil. They were creating doctrines of men like you read about in Matthew 15. 
That's why he said circum that circumcision did not profit them. So that's what it means when it says circumcision is nothing. Then it says, and uncircumcision is nothing. What does that mean? You had Israelites who came out of the Greek philosophies, Roman philosophies, who were not circumcised. Paul said that's nothing either. But what is some, what matters then? What's that? Look at the next part of the verse. But keeping the commandments, but the keeping of the commandments of God, that's all that matters. You understand that? So you brothers over there that claim to be Jews, you Jewish Israelites, you Jew Israelites who don't keep the commandments, who, who are circumcised, you ain't nothing because you ain't keeping the commandments. And you have that Israelites that was scattered over, over yonder. You coming into the truth, yet you're uncircumcised. Uncircumcised is nothing. It's nothing. You got to keep the commandments as well. He was bringing them all on one accord. Okay, let's get some more. With Paul, Galatians 5, 14. Is it Galatians I want? What comes next? Y'all bear with me. Yep, Galatians 5, 14. Reads. <laughs> For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do y'all know what that means, love your neighbor as yourself? Yeah, here's a Christian. Yeah, just say God bless you. God have mercy on you. No, it's more than that. To love your neighbor as you love yourself. Let's look at the Ten Commandments. Honor your father and mother falls under love your neighbor as you love yourself. Thou shalt not kill falls under love your neighbor as you love yourself. Thou shalt not commit adultery falls under love your neighbor as you love yourself. Thou shalt not steal falls under love your neighbor as you love yourself. Thou shalt not bear false witness falls against your neighbor, falls under love your neighbor as you love yourself. Thou shalt not covet anything that is your neighbor's falls under, thou shalt love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself is not written in, Levitic, in uh, uh, Exodus 20. It's written in Leviticus 19, verse 17, 18, 19. Let me, let me prove that. You, I know a Christian. You hate to read. You just sit there and watch. Leviticus chapter 19, I'm going to start at 17 and 18. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Now the confusion always comes in who is, the who is your neighbor. First he said your brother, then he used the term neighbor. Look at verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. What does it mean the children of your people? Your race. So you Christians never heard it taught like that. The children of your people is your neighbor, is your brother, is your race. You've been, you spent all your life hating black people, despising your race, speaking down to your race, but then you pick up the Bible so you love Jesus. Shut the hell up. Then it reads, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. See, love your neighbor as thyself is not written in the Ten Commandments. It's in Leviticus 19, verse 17 and 18. That's where it's found. Let's get some more. First Timothy chapter one. Now I read you, I really need you to pay close attention to this. Who wrote first Timothy? The apostle Paul. Watch what he says about the law. First Timothy chapter one verse. I want to start at verse nine. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Hmm. The law is not made for a righteous man. So sister Christian girl who twerks on Fridays and goes to church on Sunday, are you righteous? You Christians that worship white Jesus, are you righteous? You celebrate Christmas, Mother's Day, which are not biblical holidays, are you righteous? No. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. So what does that mean? The law is made for you and me. He, he breaks it down now. But, meaning what the law is made for, but for the lawless and disobedient. Are we lawless and disobedient? You better believe we are. For the ungodly and for sinners. Hmm. For unholy and profane. Hmm. For murderers of fathers. 
murderers of mothers, for manslayers, do we kill each other? The murder rate in Chicago is astronomical. The murder rate in Jamaica is off the chain. That's what it means for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers for manslayers. For whoremongers, are we whoremongers? Have you black women had sex with more than one man in your life? Then you are a whore. You men, you black Christians, have you had sex with woman after woman after woman? Then you're a whoremonger. For, verse 10 again, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, what does that mean? Homosexuals and lesbianism. Do you, some of you, do you Christians defy yourselves with mankind? Do women sleep with women? Men sleep with men? So the law is made for you. Paul goes on. For men stealers, for liars, for perjured person. You know what a perjured person is? You know the truth, you go to court and swear to tell the truth. Or you, you, what is the word called? You not vow, uh, you, instead of swear, you say something else. Hmm? Not, it's like an oath, but it says something else. I affirm, I affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and no, nothing but the truth, so help me God. A perjured person will, it will say that and then lie about the situation. That's a perjured person. Watch this. And if there be any other thing, because he didn't list everything, and if there be any, any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, watch verse 11, here's the, here's the bombshell, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God. What does that mean? The gospel or the law is according to the gospel of the blessed God. So he went through all these different law-breaking things. Then he says, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. So the law is according to the gospel. So what gospel are y'all preaching out there? What book are y'all reading? Y'all are insane. Let's get some more. First John. First John chapter two, verse three and four. I know on Clubhouse, y'all hate when we read this. You Christians, you hate on Clubhouse when we read this. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. You ever hear these Christians say or ask, do you, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Let's read it again. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, or I have a personal relationship with Jesus, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. That's your mothers, your fathers, and that's some of you watching right now, you bunch of liars. Let me read it again. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The truth ain't in you, brother, sister, Christian. Let's get some more. First John chapter 3, verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Wow. Keeping the commandments. First John chapter five, verse two. By this, we know that we love the children of God. Do you love the children of God? By this, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. See, Christian says they love the children of God and break every commandment written. You bunch of black, ashy devils. You. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Let's get some. I'm going to go to the last book of the Bible now. Revelation 14, verse 12. Y'all bear with me. Here is the patience of the saints, the saints of the Israelites that repent. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. See, you need those two things. You must keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Let's go to the last chapter of the last book. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. What is, what is the gates into the city making reference to? The new Jerusalem on earth. Every black evil Christian says, I'm going to be in a new kingdom. No, you're not. 
Call your, hey, share, share, share this video. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The only way you enter in through the gates into the city is by doing the commandments. And the names of the gates of the, on the city, you can read Revelation 21, verse 12. It says it had a wall high, had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. There's no gate called Baptist. There's no gate called C-O-G-I-C, Kojic. There's no gate called Roman Catholic. There's no gate called Seventh Day Adv Disadvantaged. There's no gate called Jehovah Wickedness. What the hell is wrong with y'all? What is wrong with you? I'm here as a messenger to wake you the hell up. I'm going to end it there. I love you all. Let's say shalom with that one. People go to church to hear the preacher preach the gospel of Jesus and his grace because of sin. Now, what is sin? The transgression of the law, according to 1 John 3 and 4. So sin is the transgression of the law. But modern Christianity tells us that the law has been done away with, it's been nailed to the cross, we don't need it anymore. So, law, modern Christianity says we don't need you anymore, brother, you can go sit down. So now, now, the people go to church to hear the preacher preach the gospel of Jesus and his grace because of what? sin but what is sin sin is the transgression of the law but we got a problem if we say that the law is done away with and we don't need it anymore then what is sin sin's the transgression of the law so if you have no law by definition you can have no sin so you can go sit down Miss Grace thank you alright so now let's do it again the people go to church to hear the preacher preach the gospel of Jesus and his grace because of what because of sin right we fell into sin we needed God's grace but notice when you take away the law you have no sin because sin is the transgression of the law so you take away the law by definition you also take away sin when you take away sin why do you need grace if you have no law you have no sin if you have no sin why do you need grace then? So brother, thank you. You can go sit down. So now the people go to church to hear the preacher preach the gospel of who? Jesus. But what did Jesus do? He died for our sins. But if you take away the law, then you take away sin. If you take away sin, then you have no grace. Because you have no need for grace. If you take away grace, then what did Jesus do? He didn't do anything though if you take away the law. Are you seeing the point? And so, you can go sit down, Mr. Dean. Thank you. And so now the people go to church to hear the preacher preach the what? Now, what's the gospel? The good news. But hold on. What's the good news? Of Jesus. But if you have no law, you have no sin. If you have no sin, then you have no grace. If you have no grace, then you have no need of Jesus. And if you don't have Jesus in the equation, then what's the good news? You have none. Are you with me? So thank you. You can go sit down. So now the people go to church to hear the preacher preach a whole lot of nothing. Are you with me? Just, hey, just feel good messages. All right. Now we're going to get to the reading of the letters. All right. Uh, Y'all bear with me a second. Mm, I'm just looking through them. All right, this is from Roosevelt and Albertina White. Y'all see how I have the gloves on? I told y'all my health is jacked up, but I'm getting better day by day. Y'all just keep me in your prayers. Um, I don't know what some of these letters are coded with. We have many enemies out there. But anyway, irregardless, it reads, Most High in Christ, bless you, Bishop, and your family. Hope all is well. All praise to the Most High God for you and all leadership that continue to bring out the hidden truth history and mystery of our people. Keep up the good work, you mighty men of valor. Thank you. Roosevelt and Abatina. Thank you so much. 
All right, got a card here. Mm, praying for you on this path to better health. All praises, thank you so much. To the man of God, Bishop Nathaniel, praying you'll sense God's perfect care for you as each day brings you renewed strength and health. You're loved. Thank you for bringing us the word that woke us up to who we are. I'm deeply grateful to you. May the Most High God keep you. All pray. Thank you so much. Got another card here. Shalom, Most High in Christ. Bless, Bishop. Again, glad to see you doing better. Been praying for you. I noticed you had your gloves on. Yes, keep them on. I'm in healthcare, and boy, I tell you, the stuff I see, you wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe it. This is from Sister Chilita. Uh, praying the Lord blesses you, your giving heart in abundant measure. Thank you. To you and the other two bishops and leadership officers and soldiers for going hard in pushing this truth in our endless times. All praise to the Lord. All right. Here's another card. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Merci. Shalom, Bishop. This brother Malachi, been missing watching you on the Sabbath, but hope you're doing well. Return soon, most high in Christ. But yes, Lord's will, I will return. I do guest appearances now and then. It's kind of difficult to do two hours straight through for me now, but y'all keep me in prayers. All right. All right. I got a picture here, too. Uh, thank you again and again. Shalom, Bishop. I want to give a shout out to all leadership that's getting this truth out and waking up Israel. I'm sending this donation for the Booster Club and Deacon Asaph. Shout out to Deacon Asaph. My picture so you will know who I am. Once again, thank you. Sister Rose, thank you, Sister Rose. And here's your lovely photo. Thank you so, so much. All praises. All right. Here's another one. Shalom, Bishop. Please, you do not have to read my name aloud. I have been slow on my arm, but I will... Try and do better. I will continue to keep you and the soldiers hmm, sowing seed in my thoughts and prayers. If you will please take blankety, blankety, blank, blank, blank. Thank you. This is from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Thank you so, so much. All praises. All right. Hello, Bishop. So glad to see you are back and feeling better. Hmm. God bless you and family. I really miss your jokes and laughter and sermons. Here's my arms. Please put where needed. I go to the Orlando camp. Been going for one year. Praying for the whole family of the Israelites. God bless love. I believe that says I now, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you, I now. All right. Thank leadership for all the great teachings. I am 77 years old. All praises to the Lord and still learning. Bring, bring it out, my brothers. All praises. Thank you so much. All right. All right. I'm about to get annoyed, but the second half is really short. So this is from Sister Young. Greetings, Bishop Nathaniel. Prayerfully, by the time this letter reaches you, that you are feeling better and healed from every infirmity that has affected your physical health. As I learned from watching today's Shout Out Tuesday, the month of September has been remarkable in that I have been acquainted with IUIC by watching various teachings on YouTube and visiting the website. All praises. At first, I thought Hebrew Israelites were a racist hate group because of the expressions used such as white devils. Thanks to God Almighty, El Elohim, that my eyes have been opened and I now understand it is used in reference to the oppressors of our people, whom we were captured by and in bondage to during slavery in America and around the world. All praises, says all praises. Black people in America have a distinct rich biblical history as Hebrew Israelites. That's been hidden for so long until hearing the truth is surreal. It is evident that if you don't know who you are, you don't know where you're going. My father's from the Caribbean islands of Barbados. I'm not sure where my mother's side originated other than here in America as African descendants of slavery. So I guess that makes me part of the tribe of Benjamin. Yes, since my father is a dark skinned African from the West Indies. I've heard that whatever your father is genetically, that's what you are. Yes, you can read that in Numbers chapter one, verse 18. I don't want to make this letter too long, so I'll close with three questions. First, why don't Hebrew Israelites believe that the Holy Spirit had anything to do with the conceptions of Jesus, Yahshua? Well, number one, uh, we have many lessons on it. Type in Immaculate Deception 
or Immaculate Conception, IUIC, Immaculate Deception, IUIC, Immaculate Conception. And you see the lessons on it. We'll show you the scriptures, how it comes. It's a doctrine that the Roman Catholic Church adopted from ancient Egypt and from ancient Babylon. Okay, second question. Do Hebrew Israelites believe in, believe in polygamy? Not us. Paul said, let every man, in 1 Corinthians 7 and 2, let every man have his own wife, let every woman have her own husband. Lastly, why is the Apocrypha included in the Bible? Since it wasn't part of the canon of the original 66 books, such as Judith and Maccabees. It was. The original, look it up, King James 1611 version had the Apocrypha, just as the original Septuagint and the Latin Vulgate. They all had the Apocrypha in it. Pray for me as I continue to read, listen, and learn on my journey. Shalom, Sister Young. Thank you so, so much, sis. All right. Shalom, Bishop. Thank you so much for putting us on your prayer list or praises. We will continue to pray for you. Thank you. You're always in our thoughts and prayers, and may God continue to protect you from evil. God bless you and your beautiful family. We love you. Eureka and Brian. Thank you, Eureka and Brian. Thank you. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. I thank Most High God for IUIC leadership, their families, the prophets, their families, and 12 tribes worldwide. J.E. Thank you so, so much. All right. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. We thank Most High God for leadership, their families, 12 tribes worldwide. Words can explain how grateful we are for what you, you choose to go through for to get to where you are today because of the love you have for the black Most High. The black Christ and we his people. Thank you. One love, 12 tribes worldwide, Jennifer. Yes, Jennifer, we'll add you on a prayer list and pray for your family also. Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ. Bless you. Thank you for all you do. I just want you to know your love for the Most High do not go unnoticed. Sincerely, D. Foster. Thank you, D. Foster. Okay, I got a card. Oh, it's like a book in here. It says, no, this one is for Deacon Asaph. I apologize. This says, Shalom, Deacon Asaph. So what I'll do, I'll make sure Deacon Asaph gets this. Let me put it over here to the side. All right, uh, Mary Simeon, Shalom Bishop and leadership, just to let you know, I'm so thankful to the Father, you are, you are better and went to the men's conference, yes. Uh, much love and blessings, please accept my loyal and faithful donations so we gather together, so we go home soon. I keep praying to the Most High for all 12 tribes to come home. Most high in Christ, bless you all. You all, sign Mary, the Jersey Jew. Thank you, Mary, all praises. Next letter reads, Shalom, Bishop, thank you for the truth. I am 65 and my husband is 78. No, that says 67 and my husband is 78. Pray for our health, yes, ma'am, and our families and grands and great-grands. You left your phone number. This is from, oh, this one. Henry and Zenoa. Okay, I'll send this. Make sure Deacon Asaph gives you a call. All right, this one reads, I just want to say thank you for the excellent teachings. I'm your A-plus student. Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. Oh, this is from Mary, the Jersey Jew also. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> All right. We got another note here. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. Most high in Christ. Bless you and the family and all your IUIC. I pray you're in good health. Here is my alms and donations for, for hidden history. Thank you, Bishop, and the congregation for teaching us for the Most High and His will for us to repent. I am still struggling in my repentance, but Lord's will, I grow stronger in spirit to combat the flesh. Please keep me in your prayers, Bishop. I still have a long way to go to be right before the Lord. Thanks again for your service to the truth and the love you have for the 12 tribes. God be with you always and forever. Brother Givens, I think that says Givens of Boston. G-U-I-V-E-N-S. Okay, I got another card here. Shalom Bishop, I pray for you and your family and that these few lines find you in good health and well-being. 
People of Israel like myself and others that are sick appreciate the platforms you're, you've made available. They're a lifeline. I thank the Lord for your commitment to God and the nation, which much love and respect, Elishaba. Thank you, Elishaba. All praises to the Lord. Thank you so, so much. Okay, got a, no a note from Brother Marvin B. All praises, Bishop. I love the work you do and Israel put in. I'm learning much, much more. Keep up the good work. No, keep up the good fight. Keep me in your prayers list. Thanks so much. All praises. We will. Okay. Somebody sent in some pictures from their children. Uh, Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ, bless you. All Colossians 4, 5 to 6, speaking with Jim. My name is Arabella from the Memphis camp. First, I want to start off by giving the most high glory for sending you prophets back into this hell we all are living day by day just to wake up and seal the minds of the elect. All praise to the most high God. Secondly, my kids and myself are so, so grateful for this truth, reaching our household by shining his light on us and waking us up out of our deep sleep. This was something I've been looking for many years for my family. Since we've been in this truth, we've learned more about the Father's commandments, grace, uh, going into who we are according to the Bible. Uh, Christ is soon to save, redeem our people. Hmm. Hmm. Lord's will, he gives all the prophets the patience, faith, and faith you all have to continue walking after his vision and stand up for the old, young and weak, sick and sick. Second Timothy 1 and 3, 2 Timothy 2, 10. All praise to the Most High God, glory, mercy, and joy for the nation of Israel. Waking up, I see you prophets as Christ himself. What an amazing work, job y'all are doing. All praise for guiding and pouring out his spirit unto IUIC. You awake, mm, no, you all, are the greatest men who are walking in the face of the earth. Kings, princes, and gods, trees that bear good fruits. Galatians 5, 22, all praise the most high God. 2 Kings 2, 2, show thyself men, Ezekiel 37, 10. Exceeding great army, Ezekiel 37, 10. Multi uh, multiply men upon you, Ezekiel 36, 10. And the waste shall be built, and the cities shall be inhabited. Now you is glued, so I believe your children did this, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you sent this. You made this. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's, uh, what is that thing, thing you put your cup on? I think you put your cup on it. I'm not sure. These looks like things my grandmother used to make. But thank you. Uh, all right. All right. There's, oh, you can you wrote something else here. The, the drawing is going into how the kings, princes of this earth are going through hell and being killed every day. Not only by our enemies, but by our lost one. We are being killed every day. You got to think it's not. We, when we think about being killed, the first thought is a knife or a gun. But if you remember... What Ezekiel, if I'm not mistaken, bear with me. Y'all just bear with me. Mm. Mm. Ezekiel, I just want to read it verbatim so I'm not speaking wrong.
Ezekiel 4.13 reads, and the, children, and the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I, drive, I will drive them. So we would eat defiled bread. I want you to think about that for a second. You have people like Bill Gates buying up all the farmland in America. Hey guys, welcome to the Silver Report Uncut. So I wanted to go over probably one of the most disturbing things I have seen recently, and it's happening in many countries all over the world. There is a massive push to stop farmers from planting crops. They are actually paying them not to plant crops and to convert the land over to non-planted land. There's even discussions about making this mandatory. And they said to get us down to net zero emissions because farming somehow is producing uh, carbon. They were trying to say that when you till up the ground, it produces carbon and it's just destroying the environment by planting crops. Now, all this is happening at a time when we are seeing record food prices. We are seeing massive inflation in food prices. People are faced with a serious situation. It's really going to be impacting the poor. They're talking about, sure, stimulus payments, increases in food stamps, but they're also trying to take millions of acres out of service. The federal government is paying farmers to slaughter and kill their stock and to sell their uh, crops so that they can plant GMOs, geneti genetically modified organisms. These types of food are defiled and these types of foods are what's killing us. They're spraying pesticides over the fruits and vegetables. They're pumping food into the cows and chickens to make them larger. This is why our daughters are getting more, they seem older than they are. But the Bible has prophesied we would eat our food defiled. And I want you to just look at the world and see, especially here in America, how it's affecting us. And we are getting things like diabetes and cancer and um, various other ailments that are food related. So when the sisters talks about being killed every day, like I got I just got to read another scripture. I don't want to reference I want to reference God so that you all understand that I'm coming from a God level and not a man's level. Revelation chapter 6 And verse 9, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. I always say the first thought about being killed, we often think the knife or the gun. It's not just that. It's the foods, it's the air. Remember what they did in Flint, Michigan. And Flint, Michigan and Detroit, they cannot sue the federal government. They poisoned the water with lead. And our brothers and sisters that live in those areas are dying slowly. So when you read about the saints dying or being killed, it's not just the gun. It's not just a knife. There's various other ways that they're doing it. Okay. So let me read the next thing because she goes on. Okay. Um, to IUIC. My name is Nay. Short for Shania. I moved to Georgia from New York 2019. 2020, I kept having travel bags to New York, to travel back to New York to work. Some people, some, that's another way that some of our people have been put to death. Everybody has not died because of that. Because, uh, let me, you might know when I'm trying to figure out what the hell am I doing. You know what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Some of our people have died from that. Some, not all, some are fine right now, some are fine. 
So I just want to put that out there. Okay, back to this letter. This is from Nay, short for Shania. She moved from Georgia to New York 2019. In 2020, she kept having to travel back to New York to work. And her brother AJ woke me up to the truth. I was hard, it was hard for us to keep in touch once I got back to Georgia. So he sent me all the IUIC links to help keep me in this truth. I am forever grateful for your brother's bravery and courage and passion. I wear fringes now, modest apparel, and know how to pray properly as a woman. I thank you all for the way you teach. I've never felt so alive. Uh, this thus unlearn and relearn process has been no joke, but I'm on board. P.S. Thank you for saving my life. All praise to the Most High for IUIC. Thank the Lord for saving your life. All right. This is from Sister Sandra. Dear Bishop Nathaniel, greetings. Now, you sent, she sent two letter, letters. One is with her personal information, which I'm not going to read. I'll just read the first one. Greetings to you, IOIC family from the island of St. Kitts. I wish to express my sincere thanks and appreciation to you all for the tremendous work that you are doing to wake up and restore the nation of Israel. And closes a donation, blankety, blankety, blank. I especially like Shout Out Tuesdays because the lessons, lessons are short, impactful, and very edifying. Well, I'm not sure if this one is short, sis, but I pray it is. May the Most High, through Christ, continue to empower, guide, protect, and bless you all in your endeavors. Shalom, Sandra D. Thank you, Sandra D. of St. Kitts. Thank you so, so much. So, brothers, sisters, you know how I love to say, let's keep each other in prayer. Let's stay healthy. Let's stay focused. Let's stay faithful. But most of all, <laughs> let's all stay in the spirit. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I love you all.